Matthew Bell with Alzheimer'sProof.com. LSD and Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Is there a connection? We're going to take a look. There's actually been some recent high-profile articles that have been published on this question. I just want to dive in and take a look and maybe give it just a little bit of context as we explore the connection between psychedelics, hallucinogens, and dementia. So here's the article in Forbes, just published February the 21st of 2020, titled Microdosed LSD, Finally a Breakthrough for Alzheimer's Disease? Question mark. The article basically focuses on one Shlomi Raz, CEO and founder of the biomedical company Eleusis. And he's focused on trying to use LSD therapeutically for Alzheimer's disease. So you can see that the company Eleusis is investigating the anti-inflammatory potential of psychedelics as medicines, specifically the application of sub-perceptual doses of LSD and halting the progression of Alzheimer's. Now, let me just start from some of the very basics here. So LSD, of course, is a drug and it stands for lysergic acid diethylamide. Now, what's interesting about that just right off the bat to me is that it's not abbreviated LAD, which you might think, but LSD, and it's a potent hallucinogen. So a hallucinogen is a psychoactive agent causing hallucinations, perceptual anomalies, this is from Wikipedia, difference in subjective changes in thoughts, emotion, consciousness, and so on. Common types include, according to the article here, psychedelics, dissociatives, and delirians. Now, the word psychedelic comes from the Greek word psyche, or psyche, as we might say it now, mind, and then delos, meaning to manifest or reveal. So in other words, to reveal the mind, maybe, or to reveal to the mind, perhaps. But the word psychedelic is applied to any drug with perception-altering effects, and you see here, such as LSD. So the classical hallucinogens are considered to be the representative psychedelics, and LSD is generally considered the prototypical psychedelic. So when you think psychedelic, LSD just top of the list. And Roz acknowledges this. He says, you know, the dazzle of LSD in psychiatry obscured its potential. And I take him essentially to be meaning that the reputation of LSD as a psychedelic has been so overpowering that people have hesitated to even think of it therapeutically, let alone try it. And researchers maybe have had trouble getting funding or thought they might have trouble getting funding because of this reputation. And it's not entirely unfounded. Obviously, the psychedelic hallucinogen LSD type trajectory has a number of exponents. They're often associated with some of the excesses of the 1960s. So you have Timothy Leary right in the center of the book, you know, his turn on, tune in, drop out type of mentality is psychedelic experiences that were often fueled with LSD and other hallucinogens. Aldo Huxley, writing in his book, The Doors of Perception, inspired, at least in part, the band by the same name, The Doors. And again, sex, drugs, rock and roll, all that stuff from the 1960s. And in addition to that, the government has had a kind of a dark side of experimentation with this stuff. Some of the agencies, including the Central Intelligence Agency, have allegedly experimented with LSD on people, sometimes unwitting subjects. But lysergic acid diethylamide is a compound that was essentially synthesized by Mr. Albert Hoffman. Now you can see Mr. Hoffman, born in 1906, died in 2008, age 102. So that's considerable longevity there. But LSD, according to the story, Hoffman accidentally concocted it while trying to experiment with the ergot and trying to create circulatory and respiratory stimulants. So again, in the article in the Atlantic, if you want to pursue it a little further, apparently useless was the quote, the accidental discovery of LSD. It says after the drug was dismissed by the pharmaceutical company that developed it, a researcher started experimenting on himself with it. Powerful hallucinations ensued. So it derives from ergot. So ergot or ergot fungus is a type of a fungus specifically claviceps, I guess, is the genus. And it is this claviceps purpurea, in any case, it grows on rye, so rye ergot fungus. And there you see the ergot on a rye plant, claviceps purpurea. That's not a sandwich, ergot on rye, don't order it because it can be dangerous. Ergot and its alkaloids, you see here, the American Journal of Pharmaceutical Education 
in an article in 2006, informs us that it has been speculated that the 4,000-year-old Eleusinian mysteries of ancient Greece were connected with the ergot-induced hallucinogen. So in those ceremonies, going back to ancient Greece, there was something called kaikion, and this was a substance that was used to break a sacred fast in these Eleusinian mysteries, but it's really unknown what this substance was, but you can see here that it is a it is believed by many people to be or to have been some kind of psychoactive brew. Now in the book, The Road to Eleusis, subtitle Unveiling the Secrets of the Mysteries, and you can see here the three authors are Gordon Wasson, Carl A.P. Ruck, and in the middle, Albert Hoffman, in the book, they argue that this ergot was essentially the psychoactive component in the sacred meal here for the Eleusinian mysteries. But it can cause a disease, a condition called ergotism, and there are two main arms of symptom here. The first is convulsive, the second is gangrenous. So the first convulsive has to do with the muscles, but also the central nervous system can cause mental effects, including mania and psychosis. In terms of the gangrenous symptoms, it can cause severe skin problems, death of the tissue, just all kinds of really nasty skin problems. On an article discovered on the National Center for Biotechnology Information, you can see here lysergic acid diethylamide, LSD. Research has also begun to look at LSD as a possible treatment for Alzheimer's disease. And again, other, other conditions as well, including migraine headaches, cluster headaches. And I, I, a couple of things I just want to say, firstly, is that LSD is not the only drug in this class that is being explored for the possible therapeutic effects. So other psychedelic drugs are also being investigated. And in part, some of these are because they are believed that they can actually change the structure of the brain. They can do things that might have surprising benefits. You see here for certain mood disorders. We just looked at migraines, we looked at dementia. Here in a letter to the editor, this uh, scientific journal here, you see the title of it, Imagining a Role for Psychedelics in Dementia Care. And you can see that the author of this article points out not just LSD, but also psilocybin, MDMA, so methylene dioxymethamphetamine, or MDMA, is a street drug, I guess, called ecstasy or molly, ketamine, and the author suggests that ketamine has been used successfully therapeutically, and then goes on to speculate that this might also be the case for LSD, and also salvinorin. Now, salvinorin comes from a species of the sage plant called the diviner sage, but Sage shows up in one of my other videos in terms of regular sage, garden sage, so shows up in one of my other videos as a possible herb that might have some therapeutic effect for dementia by itself. So the point is there's a wide range of psychedelics and even mushrooms get in on it here from another article in Forbes, Magic Mushrooms as Medicine. And then Johns Hopkins scientists launched Center for Psychedelic Research say psychedelics could treat Alzheimer's, depression, and addiction. And part of the reason for the interest is because of the fact that apparently psychedelics, some of them anyway, can function as anti-inflammatory agents. And here you got Dr. Charles Nichols, and Dr. Nichols was cited by Shlomi Raz in his interview with Forbes. The other thing I want to say just as a kind of a background piece of information is when I did the causes for Alzheimer's disease, I listed 10 possible causes and some possible interventions. And you can see that on alzheimersproof.com. But when I got to number seven, I listed oxygen deficiency, which medically I suppose is called hypoxia. And it's related to this ischemia, which is kind of a closing down of the blood vessels. So if your blood vessels get cut off, blood flow to the brain can cut off the oxygen supply. Essentially, this is gonna be associated with things like strokes, mini strokes or transient ischemic attacks, TIAs. My dad had a lot of these, uh, or at least that was part of his medical history and part of the prelude to his Alzheimer's and dementia was his own history with a couple of TIAs. But further down in this article, you can see, now I should also mention that there is such a thing as vascular dementia or multi-infarct dementia, which is more straightforwardly a matter of strokes. So whether or not, you know, that should be distinguished from Alzheimer's, you know, that some medical practitioners are going to do that. But the point that I'm making here is that if you go down to the red area, there is a compound called ergoloid, also called hydrogyne. And it was also developed by Albert Hoffman of uh, Sandoz. And he was the guy, again, with the LSD, the godfather of LSD, if you want to think of it that way. But ergoloid 
is used apparently to increase blood circulation and oxygenation. That ergoloid is a derivative of this ergot that we looked at earlier. You can see here, this is from Wikipedia. It's been used to treat dementia and age-related cognitive impairments such as Alzheimer's as well as to aid in recovery after strokes. Now, under the mechanism of action, I just thought that was kind of interesting. It said, despite the fact that it has been used for treatment of dementia for many years, its mechanism of action is still not clear. So they're not sure how it works. But in the case of LSD, some of these researchers believe they at least have a handle on part of the way it works. You can see the mechanism on how LSD works is mainly mediated by the activation of serotonin receptors. So in, in particular, this 5-HT2A receptor, which in the Forbes article, Mr. Raz refers to that as the serotonin 2A receptor. And here we, we go back to Forbes, the interview, and Raz says the same receptor that mediates the psychoactivity of psychedelics is also implicated in the effects of the, that these compounds have in terms of providing protection against oxidative stress, enhancing neuroplasticity, and alleviating depression and anxiety. And because these compounds are anti-inflammatory, also they address a constellation of dysregulated functions in aging. Still quoting from Roz, digging further, I found research indicating that this receptor, if it was engaged by a psychedelic drug, would also reduce the amount of toxic amyloid that was produced in an organism. And amyloid, of course, has been a primary target for researchers investigating Alzheimer's interventions. So Roz's point, LSD, focuses or at least has something to do with oxidation, inflammation, neuroplasticity, and amyloid, which makes it relevant to four different therapeutic targets for Alzheimer's disease. And so when he's asked, how is your approach different from other drugs? This is exactly what he points to. Most companies try and target a single therapeutic intervention. They're trying to be anti-amyloid. They're trying to raise acetylcholine. They're trying to reduce inflammation. But in his case, He's trying to hit multiple therapeutic targets. And he says, Alzheimer's is a complex disease. Probably makes sense that this is gonna be the kind of a, an approach you'd have to take. But at the same time, conventional drug developers usually don't wanna hear that because it is going to exponentially increase the cost and complexity of drug development, not to mention approval. And so he calls LSD a serendipity that it has the ability, presumably, to do these things simultaneously. And so this has led to work particularly through Eleusis, but work in terms of low-dose investigations of low-dose LSD and, and their potential for treatment for Alzheimer's disease. And then, of course, the question, will it work? Well, it is low-dose, so these are microdoses, is what it's called, LSD in 5, 10, and 20 micrograms, and it is supposed to be below the threshold that would be detectable or that would have a psychoactive effect. But this uh, article suggests that the study is probably going to open the door for larger trials, which are going to be more helpful in actually investigating the potential therapeutic effects of LSD. Now, Raz, in his opinion, LSD has a very well-established safety record, and its main liability is its psychoactivity. So if you just Google, you know, does LSD fry your brain, hurt your brain, damage your brain, you'll run across the term permafried, which is essentially the idea that LSD is going to just simply sit in the serotonin receptor even after you're done dosing with it or whatever and that this can cause permanent state of hallucination or of you know detachment or derangement and you can essentially get this permanent drug-induced type behavior but in healthline's opinion there is no evidence to support the claim that lsd kills brain cells if anything, they say it might actually promote growth, but this hasn't been demonstrated yet. Vice Magazine comments, is it a myth that LSD can permanently fry your brain? And then quotes from a different Nichols, pharmacologist David Nichols, told me that permanent acid trips make no medical sense. And then the question is put to him, this study shows that acid sticks in people's serotonin receptors, maybe for days at a time. Can it stay there forever and make people permafried? And Dr. Nichols' response is, it's pretty much a myth, pretty much a myth. But there are certain people who have a predisposition to certain types of mental illness, for example, schizophrenia, and then he says LSD might trigger the onset of psychosis. Now, in fairness to, to Nichols, Nichols goes on to say that he doesn't believe personally, this Nichols, anyway, not Charles, but David, doesn't believe it has, that is LSD has any benefit 
I think it is more of a fad than anything else. Now, another author that I thought I would just throw in for historical purposes, Robert Graves, 20th century British author and classicist. He wrote a number of books, The White Goddess, The Greek Myths, and he gets into the Eleusis and Eleusinian mysteries angle. And in his book, The Greek Myths, he writes also about this Kaikion. He spells it differently. You can see here C-E-C-Y-O-N in the book, but he talks about it and he talks about Eleusis. And then he mentions his particular theory that it is a mushroom, a psychedelic mushroom. And he mentions that he himself has eaten the hallucinogenic mushroom, the psilocybe. Now, the reason I point this out is to show that he is no opponent of psychedelics. And yet, according to Graves, the ergot is, quote, the enemy of mankind. And so he says he has, he considers LSD dangerous. Ergot is a minute black fungus that grows on rye. And he talks about it historically as giving people manic visions and even suggests that ergot might affect the genes and disorder the next generation. Now, of course, Graves is not a medical doctor. You know, he died in the 80s, I believe. And so, you know, presumably additional research has been done, but uh, I just simply register his opinion here. So WebMD, some use LSD as a brain boost, but dangers remain. And the idea here to just go back to Healthline is that LSD is a powerful substance. It can lead to some frightening experiences. If a person has a medical condition underlying psychosis or a proclivity to psychosis, it could be especially bad. But here we have to remember, I think, at least that we're talking about people who have Alzheimer's disease or some other form of dementia. And so we're not just considering its use, let's say, as some kind of a nootropic or just some kind of a recreational drug. We're considering that it might have a therapeutic effect on people who have actual brain damage as a fact on the ground. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you appreciated something in this video, found it interesting or thought provoking, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell if you wanna be alerted to new content as it becomes available. If you think that someone else might appreciate this content as well, please share the video with them. I thank you so much for being with me today and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Thank you.